Furthermore, supercars follow a pretty similar formula. You've got an engine in the middle, drive goes either to the rear wheels or all four, and in the cabin, you've got two seats. And that's great. It works really well when all you're considering is performance. But the problem is, it's not all that practical, especially for somebody that maybe has a family. And that fact has led to kind of a shift in the automotive industry. You've got this trend of super SUVs. Aston Martin has the DBX 707, Rolls-Royce has the Cullinan, Bentley has the Bentayga, and even Lamborghini has the highly successful Urus. But there's one supercar brand that's kind of been absent from the conversation until now. That brand is Ferrari, and this is their contribution, the all-new Ferrari Pro Sangue, which translates to thoroughbred. It's the first ever four-door, four-seater in the brand's history, and in today's video, I'll quickly take you through it. The exterior, the interior, and of course, its performance. Start by talking you through the exterior design, and there's quite a lot to talk about because Ferrari has done an excellent job at hiding things in the bodywork. I'll explain what I mean. You've got this black stripe that goes along the front of the car. That's actually for your front-facing camera, some of your parking sensors, so it's gonna be black no matter what color you choose for the car, but it really helps to hide those items. Also, you've got plenty of carbon fiber on the front end. These are actually your headlights. These are your daytime running lights, and these areas here are vents. It's inspired by the Ferrari 812 Competizione and the aero bridge design. So as air passes through these vents, it goes through the bodywork, exits out of this channel, and down the side. I'll talk more when I switch over to the side of the car. But with the 812, it's done to increase downforce. With the Pearl Sangue, it's done to reduce drag. You also have vents along the side. There's little slots here, which I would imagine add a tiny bit of downforce on either side of the axle. But I think the primary purpose of it is to promote airflow in the direction that Ferrari wants it to go, just alongside the car to really reduce the impact as it's driving about. Along the side of the car, you have these fantastic five-spoke 22-inch wheels in the front, 23-inch wheels in the back. You see the aero bridge exit port pushing that air along the side of the car nice and smooth, and the ports on the bottom doing very much the same thing all the way down to this exit port here. All of that is really just going to reduce the impact of the air as it passes over the bodywork. You've got a carbon fiber mirror here, carbon fiber side skirt as well. The whole side profile of the Pro Sangue looks amazing to me, kind of like a hunched over cheetah getting ready to pounce. Carbon fiber roof comes standard for this car. You can option out for a glass one if you'd like. Finally, onto the rear section of the Pura Sangue, and you have some more Roma vibes, I would say, on the top part of the vehicle with these tail lights. You've got functional quad exhaust pipes, carbon fiber rear diffuser. You actually have an exit port here for some of the air that's gonna exhaust out from inside of that rear fender. And from where I'm sitting right here, it's much more obvious that you can see how aggressive of an angle the rear windshield slopes down. Now that's gonna work in conjunction with the rear spoiler to make it not necessary to have a rear windshield wiper. So as the air flows over the top of the car, it's gonna slice down and push any fluid off of the rear windshield, which is a very interesting design. Also, you notice just how wide this thing is from back here. The rear fenders just kind of have a muscly appearance to them. It really gives the Pro Sangue a very aggressive presence. Now the interior on the Pura Sangue is extremely special and I'm very excited to go through it. Now, all of the modern technology that Ferrari has to offer is incorporated into this car. So all of the switches and buttons and functionality on the steering wheel is gonna be very similar to what you'll find on other modern Ferraris. But where most modern cars have some gratuitous giant touchscreen in the center for your infotainment, the Pura Sangue has taken a bit of a different approach. Ferrari calls it its dual cockpit design, and there's the car beeping at me. So the driver has his own screen, which will give all of the pertinent driving information, your tachometer, your speed, your navigation, all of that sort of thing. The passenger will be able to experience it in their own way via a 10.25 inch infotainment screen. That's gonna give them some pertinent driving information as well as allow them to change things like their music and connectivity. As far as climate control, there's a little button here and that will 
extend out for you to be able to change the different parameters that you'd like. And then you have some haptic feedback buttons sprinkled throughout the interior to control some other functions as well. As for controlling the powertrain, it's got a very similar system to the Roma. You have these two child lock buttons so you can control the rear doors from the front and all of your window controls are in the center as well. But now we're gonna switch over to the back, which is where things get really interesting. As for getting into the back seats, it's very interesting, very unique in fact, because if you notice, there are no traditional door handles on the Pura Sangue. There's a little door push area for the front doors, but for the rear doors, there's a little tab. And if you hold that tab open, the rear door will open as a suicide door. Now, I know that you have the same electronic type of system on a Rolls-Royce Cullinan, but in my experience, it doesn't work as well because if you want to push the door closed on your own, there's quite a lot of electrical resistance and that's not the case with this. It's very easy to move. There's almost no resistance at all. And if you want to close it, you can either use your hands or just hold the tab and it will close on its own. But let's go ahead and jump into the back seat because the story gets even better. Now in the rear seats of the Pura Songwe, it's more good news. I am six foot two and I've set up the front seat so that I can sit comfortably in the front and yet I can still sit quite comfortably in the back. I can sit perfectly straight. I still have a bit of headroom. Both of the rear seats work independent of each other. They can both be reclined, pushed forward, pushed back. You've got all of those options and they're also heated seats. So you have that functionality as well. My knees do not hit the front seats. There's plenty of room back here, which is very surprising because when you look at the car from the outside, it doesn't look that big. The car looks small on the outside and it's big on the inside. Also very comfortable. A lot of luxury and performance SUVs, even though this isn't really an SUV, have very bulky seats. Ferrari has found a way to make the seats very comfortable without them sacrificing their appeal. They look very good. In fact, the entire interior looks brilliant and it's sprinkled with really nice materials. There's plenty of leather, carbon fiber, Alcantara. It looks and feels extremely premium. Finally, onto the performance specifications. The Pura Sangue borrows its engine from the 812 Competizione. It's a 6.5 liter naturally aspirated V12 and produces 725 brake horsepower, 528 pound-feet of torque. It actually also borrows some Formula One technology from the Ferrari racing team to improve the torque performance at the lower RPMs. Drivetrain is four-wheel drive, very similar to the one that you'll find in the GT4C Lusso, where bias goes to the rear wheels unless otherwise needed. All of this means that 0 to 60 is done with in 3.2 seconds, which is suspiciously similar to the 0 to 60 time of an actual Cheetah. Coincidence? Top speed is much higher though at 193 miles per hour, which means that the Puro Sangue ties with the DBX 707 for top speed and beats pretty much the rest of the competition. Now we're not gonna drive this car today, unfortunately, but I have driven other Ferraris and I can tell you that out of every brand, Ferraris have such a bespoke and amazing driving feel. It's unlike anything else. And that might sound biased, but for anyone that's driven a Ferrari, you know exactly what I mean. It's a very passionate driving experience, and I would imagine that it's much the same story with this. As far as pricing, I should mention that the MSRP is right around $400,000, and that is a lot of money. It is more than most of the competition, but there are things that you need to consider. First of all, it's the first ever four-door, four-seater Ferrari, and that means a lot in Ferrari's history. Also, the DBX 707 borrows from AMG. The Rolls-Royce Cullinan borrows from BMW and even Lamborghini borrows much from Audi and Porsche. This is a Ferrari all the way through and that is extremely important and I think it's gonna play a huge role in how it drives. But that's all I have for this video. I wanna say a huge thank you to Ferrari of South Bay for letting me come by and do a video of the new Pura Sangue. I will leave the normal links to their website and social media in the description below for you to go ahead and check them out. If you're in the market for a Ferrari, definitely reach out to them and let them know that Car Cave sent you. Other than that, leave me a comment below with your thoughts on the Pura Sangue. Do you like it, do you not? Let us know down below. Leave a like and subscribe to show your support for the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I post. But until the next video, thank you for watching and take care.